Okay, friends, in these wild and chaotic times, I wanted to share some wisdom that I found in a book titled The Experience of Eternity by Jean Dubuis. I do not speak French, and so that was my best attempt to say Jean Dubuis' name in a way that sounds vaguely French-like. Hopefully I've achieved that, but something tells me I have not. But that's not really important. Dubuis was a French alchemist, esotericist, and Kabbalist. When I say alchemist, a lot of people go running for the doors, but Dubuis was not concerned with transforming lead into gold. He perceived alchemy primarily the way that uh, Carl Jung, the great psychiatrist, psychologist Carl Jung, and uh, Isaac Newton and various other great minds throughout time perceived it, which was a system for the transformation of consciousness, um, a spiritual system, if you were, though I prefer to speak of things in terms of consciousness rather than spirituality. Um, but whatever your preferred nomenclature, however, whatever terminology you like, that was the kind of alchemy that Dubuis was talking about. Now, Dubuis passed away in 2010, right? But the perception of the world and the way that he saw humanity and, and the evolution of consciousness going, I don't think he would have been very surprised at the events of 20, 2020 to 2022. Um, he saw us even... Um, before his passing as entering a new stage in evolution of um, this reality, right? Now, I want to say human consciousness, but it's actually more than that because to Dubuis and to various people who have um, similar worldviews, consciousness precedes matter, right? Like the universe is consciousness. So when you talk about the evolution of consciousness, you're talking about the evolution of the universe itself, the evolution of reality itself with the human being being just part of that pretty wild concept eh? but a uh, pretty fascinating concept as well and so to uh to the boy um what he laid it out he he said there's like there was a uh, it could be presented as a ladder with a number starting at one and number going to ten at number one was when the universe was beginning and it was um ethereal and there was no individu individuation it was just this sea of consciousness. And then the universe decided to start creating, um, to start creating, to create the universe, right? Out of this just sea of consciousness. And it started to condense things into individuated forms, right? Which then became matter. And as you like descend, you picture like he had number one through three was still in this like ethereal stage before things were um, solid at all. And then as you go down to 10, at number 10 is where things are the most um, solid, material, um, rigid, and the most separated from each other, right? So like at the beginning, all was unity. Consciousness individuated, went down this chain down to 10 where everything is feeling very separated. Do, do things not feel very separated right now? Do we not feel a lot of division right now? Well, Dubuis felt that we were in stage 10 of this chain, and uh, it's interesting to me because the Hindus, um, well, at least some Hindus, believe that we're in the Kali Yuga, which is kind of similar, even though they perceive it as a circle, with the Kali Yuga also being this um, time of dense materiality when we are divided and separated from each other and from the wellspring of cre uh, creation, etc. So it's kind of similar ideas, um, just s different ways to graphically um, conceive them. But anyway... So Dubuis um, was saying that we are in 10, but we're actually now transitioning back to 9 because the model of reality that he posits, posited, you know, he's passed away now, um, was that we go down to the bottom. It's kind of helter-skelter. You get back to the bottom. We go back to the top of the slide. I got those lyrics wrong. But you go down to 10, um, which we're in now, and now we begin the, the journey back to the source, back to number one. Now you have to keep in mind these things happen over massively long scales, or what we perceive as massively long scales of time. Um, but, and so Dubuis uh, felt that we were transitioning into level nine. Now it's more complicated than that because, you know, he says like some people were already kind of tapped into level nine and some people even level eight, etc., etc. It's So it's not uniform, but as a generalization, going from 10 to nine, we're, we're going through these throes of upheaval, entering a new stage of consciousness as we return to the source. Um, and there's a reason for all that. Like it's not, there's a reason why 
consciousness, the consciousness, decided to do this. There's a grand plan, but that will be for another another video. Um, something that appeals to me a lot. Um, I it's just in my nature. I cannot accept the fact that there was not some kind of design or plan to this reality. It's just not in me, man. And so Dubuis' um, perception appeals to me a lot because there's a, a method behind it and a purpose in a direction. But anyway, something he shares that struck me as extremely useful um, to this time that we're in right now. He was talking about as we're, as we're living through this transitional time. And remember, like I said, he passed away in 2010. But for him, he already saw like the transition had become, it had begun already, even though 20 to 22 has been a very unsettling volatile stressful time um it's not it was not the beginning it's just like the maybe like the most at least so far the most violent phase that we've lived in of this period of transition and so he said there were two very important tools to keep in mind as we make this journey and there was one in particular that i want to share with all of you um, because i think it's important and that one is that dubois said that through this period, as we're making this journey, we have to develop a um, a level of discernment. I, he said something that borders on scientific rigor. What he meant was seeing the world around us and trying to understand what's happening. And this is fascinating to me that he saw this in 2010, because how, how powerful does this feel? How pertinent does this feel to the times that we're in right now? Um, he said we need to exercise this level of discernment that borders on scientific rigor and i found that very useful and i wanted to share it because how much grief um pain and uncertainty would that have saved you over the past couple years because i know i have frequently fallen into whatever the new the new thing is on social media um the new crisis, the new terror, the new um, the new boogeyman, right? I mean, like, all this stuff is coming at us all the time. How many times over the past couple of years did you see something that you felt certain was real and you realized it wasn't real at all, right? And now you look back, you probably don't even remember it now, but if you were to sit down and really think, I guarantee there would be a bunch of things that you th that you would think of over the last couple of years that you were led to believe were ironclad truth, that turned out to be nothing burgers, completely nothing burgers, with no fabric of reality whatsoever in them, or perhaps some little shred of reality in them, but so small that um, might as well not be there at all. Um, it's a very confusing time. I actually had this uh, thought earlier. I said, you know, it's like living in a fun house, and then I thought, you know, well, fun house mirrors. And then I thought to myself, well, where's the safest place to look, or where's the smartest place to look when you're stuck in a fun house, right? Look at the floor. Look at your own feet. Look at the look at the earth beneath your feet. Look at the, the thing that you know is real. Don't get distracted by the distorted mirrors around you. Um, and this is something that I have to, on a daily basis, remind myself of. But I think it's very important right now. Um, because, dude, people have figured out ways to um, affect and modify and trigger human behavior on levels that we've never seen before. This this is not woo. This is not crazy. Um, that that's a fact of the modern reality that we're in. I mean, you look at the the people who develop these social media applications, and um, they found ways to actually use reward and punishment to um, basically addict you to social media. Um, but it goes beyond that. I mean, you have these various forms of media, both corporate media, which I'm not particularly fond of, but also independent media. Happens in independent media all the time as well. People take something, they put their own distorted view on it, and then they run with it. It seems so real at the time, and then two days later, you're left thinking, wow, how stupid am I? How did I go along for that journey, right? Well, instead of always retroactively looking back at the last time we got hoodwinked, I think it's, personally, I believe that the buoy was correct and accurate in foreseeing this time and saying we need to stay mindful on a daily business of practicing extreme rigor in um, what we decide to believe about the reality around us. We need to demand real evidence. Um, 
Yeah, we need to demand real evidence. We need solid proof of things um, for our own mental and emotional well-being. If you are somebody who believes in this consciousness spirituality thing, also for those purposes. But even if you take away what some people consider woo, even just for your emotional and uh, psychological well-being, it's important to exercise a profound level of discernment in these times that we're living in right now, which that itself can be a little unsettling because it means that um, maybe things that you have reflexively believed were true for a long time, you now have to scrutinize. But I personally think that in the long run, it's the most important thing right now because I personally think in that area, stuff's about to get even crazier than it already has been, and it's already been pretty crazy. And so, yes, this is just a friendly sharing of the wisdom of Jean de Bouy. Um, oh, the second thing he said was that um, practicing um, goodwill, which he called the universal solvent, I'm not so eager to share that, not because I don't, I always try to express goodwill. I hope that comes through in these videos. But at the same time, over the last couple of years, there have been plenty of good people that have been destroyed for no reason other than that they oppose certain narratives. And um, so goodwill does not seem to be a universal solvent for them. So I'm not quite ready to jump on that bandwagon with John. But um, maybe let me think about it. Let me really think about it. But what I am totally ready to jump on and totally ready to share is what I just shared. Practice a discernment of everything that you see with a level of rigor bordering on scientific. Not easy, but it may be our only hope right now because there are all these forces that are trying to spin us in there, to trying to spin narratives to get us to go along with their rides. And I'm not so sure that a lot of these people have our best interests in mind. But it's not even you can even subtract the malevolent will of any forces behind it. And just maybe maybe it's just crazy. Maybe this is just a chaotic time that has resulted from the proliferation of technology, and there is actually no um, malevolent forces behind it. It is just the nature of this crazy thing that has created out of happenstance. Either way, does it really matter? Ultimately, this is a time to uh, question question what we see and um, question it ruthlessly and um, practice discernment. I think that was also in the Bible, was it not? Discernment. But um, yeah, practice extreme levels of discernment and be careful what you believe and be careful what narratives you go along with, my friends. Because um, we are suggestible creatures and you never really be sure where you're going to go once you're triggered. So yeah, stay mindful, stay vigilant, and uh, keep being happy and don't let the bastards bring you down. That's what I say. That part's me. Dubuis did not say that. That's me. That's it. Peace out, my friends.